We've been at this campsite at Doubtless Bay for the Easter holidays and but today we're going to leave to go to a different campsite. I don't know what it's called or where it is and honestly I don't even think mum and dad know either. Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. This week we're inland in Northland, basing ourselves out of the agricultural showgrounds or the A&P showgrounds in Kaikui. A cheap spot on power and the dinosaur show came to a caravan. What a surprise. We do some exploring in this area which we will share with you in our vlog. But first we need to start this one from Ramp Road Freedom Camp because we saw a massive shark and our kids are fun. Hey everyone, so yes, we are not, not sure where we're going today, but we are starting our pack up, heading towards Kirikiri or Kaikohe. And uh, our kids are, are very helpful. They have to do a bunch of the jobs to help us pack up. So Jade and Riley are doing the dishes at the moment. No, I'm not. You just were. Um, it's actually Riley's turn. She's gone to help pick up the pedal board. And uh, who's on stays today, Jade? Yeah. Who's sweeping? Toby. Toby's on sweep. Oh man, this floor. It's so sandy from everyone being down at the beach. The beach has quite got quite fine sand here. Oh, everything's just been covered. Says the one who walked in last night with such sandy feet to go to the toilet. Mate, I was fishing. <laughs> Definitely got a bit of a preteen uh, coming into the caravan with us, but um, look at us, there's sand everywhere. Oh my gosh. All the sand's dad's fault. Last night, there were these... Okay, I just want to point out, who was sweeping up sand while you guys were watching videos last night? Who swept up the sand off the floor? There were... Who swept up the because sand off the floor? Because it was you, because it was your fault. Oh, whatever. So, so, no, no, no. So, Dad came in last <laughs> night. No, I'm out. And, um, he came in with sandy feet and then he said, Who's... Who came in here with sandy feet? And we all said, You! And he was like... Anyway, such is life when you're um, camping at the beach. Sand just seems to come anyway. Riley's on. Keep doing the dishes anyway, you. Oh, <laughs> so what you're washing out, Jade? Okay. <laughs> so. Sofa's our exceptional packer. She always does the groceries into the fridge because there's uh, only ever just enough room, and now she's sorting the truck out. <laughs> Here you go. Another thing. All while Dad helpfully vlogs it. Turned to the spot for Easter because it's for free and it's beautiful and we knew that we would have a good time here catching some waves and doing some fishing so we're about to head off though actually there was a really big shark out there yesterday here's a little bit of a uh, drone footage from that shark like a lifeboat when you lost at sea I will carry you when it's hard to breathe should your eyes grow tired but you can't sleep My love don't let go, hold on to me My love don't let go, hold on to me Hold on Also, I want to show you a little Toby's contraption he made. It was on our Facebook and Instagram stories. A reminder for you uh, want to see more of what we are up to, then Facebook and Instagram Leopards Go Wild, and um, you can see a little bit more of what we get up to in our day that doesn't always make it onto YouTube. All right, Toby, tell us about it first. What have you made? I made a little track for what these to go down. Okay, let's see what happens. Ready? Yeah. Woo! Go in the next one. Oh, oh no! This is how much rock had broke from here all the way down to here. You didn't get that, it's Toby's broken wall. When his, the balls that he made out of sand busty just makes his wall a bit higher. That's the real reason we get so much sand in the caravan, right there. The idea of up about two days ago. 
go. What's this haircut you got? A mullet. <laughs> Alright, to show our true dedication to full-time caravanning, we've decided we're going to go to Kaikuhi. So that way, uh, we've just got everything there. They've got $20 a night for powered sites, full showers, washing machine included. Uh, if we go to Kiri Kiri, we have to drive through town, go to get water at the dump station, and then all the way back to the NZMCA, which is quite full. Easter weekend, it's not a very big spot. And the Kaikuhi one sounds like it's got loads of room, and Soph is going to ride the Twin Coast Trail. We are on the road, so let's see where, let's see what this beautiful scenery is all about up here, eh? Kui AMP showgrounds, like an agricultural park, which is maybe not the most beautiful of places to camp, but it's very practical. $20 a night, we've got power, we've got a full bathroom set up, and free laundry, which is going to save a bit of money. So we're booked in here for a few nights, and our sofa will be on our bike in the morning. These kinds of places are generally always pretty quiet. There's only uh, three other people here, and it is Easter Monday today, so you'd expect there'd be a few others, but Sweet, we will enjoy hanging out and checking out this area. I've never been to this part of New Zealand before. Good morning everybody, it's a sunny day today. We are going to pick up Soph. She left at about 7 o'clock on her bike from about 40 k's of this Twin Coast Trail. But we're going to go into Kaikuhi and get one of the famous Lens Pies, which is a bit of a... Here, it's a good Northland pie. We'll go and check them out. So here in New Zealand, there is a network of bike trails called the Great Rides. Some of them are multi-day, and Soph has been ticking them off as we've travelled around the country. This one, the Twin Coast Trail, goes from the Hokianga Harbour, where we're headed to pick her up, and goes all the way to Opua in the Bay of Islands, around about 90 kilometres to complete the full trail. Lots of good, uh, lots of good bakery items in there. Jade, show them your custard square you got. Oh, this looks so good. Yeah. Oh, I'll show them. Yeah. Mmm. All right, let's see what they like, kids. Good rise. Pretty good price. Four dollars ninety for a for a pie. That's pretty pretty reasonable these days. Good custard square, Jade. Mm-hmm. So for us, Soph's ride meant about a 40 kilometer one-way trip to get out to her finishing spot for the day, the old mission house, which was at the end of the trail. This place sure was quiet and very, very peaceful. Nice to spend some time out here having a look around. This place has a lot of history, eh? The Hokianga Harbour, if you look on Google Maps, it's just marae, marae, marae. Apparently, according to the sign down there, over 70 Māori chiefs here in 1840 to sign the Treaty of Waitangi. So, the biggest um, amount of Māori chiefs to gather for the signing. 70, that's quite a lot, isn't it, for 1840. Goodness.
Toby, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> How was the ride, Si? Oh man, it was so good to be back on the bike after getting attacked by a plant two months ago. Um, it was such a good ride, but I feel very bike unfit. I'm glad it was mostly downhill. Really good trail, uh, cool yep. scenery. Uh, nice to kind of come down and be here at the Hokianga. What a great place to finish up. Looking forward to finishing it um, Kawakawa tomorrow. If I can make it. How far did you ride today? Oh uh, well, I didn't charge my watch, so that died. <laughs> uh, you thought it was about 42k, though, right? I think 45. it was going to be over 42, 43, four k's to Kikui. I don't know, 40 something, 40 something late maybe. One thing's for sure, down here is just so peaceful. Well, there's a plane up there, but she's pretty quiet out here. <laughs> Beautiful. Not really too sure what there is to do in this area, so often I'll just jump onto Google Maps. Um, so we had a look where Sos Ride was finishing. We've seen there's the White Eddy Boulders Nature Reserve and Campsite. Never heard of it, so we're going to have a little look. It's just like this. There to there. So not far of a drive. We'll go and check it out. Check it out. On our way to White Eddy Boulders, only a few kilometres, it was nice to see some of the autumn colours coming out. After being beachfront for the last six weeks, we hadn't seen any of autumn yet. So the Boulders Nature Reserve is $35 for a family to wander through and see the boulders and the rocks. From the photos that are in here, they do look very impressive. But we've been a bit spoiled, and as Donkey would say, we've seen some nice boulders. But as well as Soph doing a 40 kilometer ride, I don't think that we were up for a couple of hours here. Very interesting little area. It's a little bit pricey to go and look at these boulders. I thought it was just something that was a little free walk around, but you can camp here 10 bucks a night for adults under 16s are free. Doesn't look like there's anything here though. If you do pay the fee to do the walk though, you can camp here for free, so that's always an option. This is the Pukete Forest Park. We just saw a sign, it was only two kilometres to get here, so we came down the road to have a look. There's, it looks like a nice little river there, we'll find out what there is to do here. So it looks like a few hikes to do in the area, but the kids were up for a swim, and if you're not from around here, which we aren't, it can be pretty challenging finding some good freshwater swimming spots. Cool, we just drove the truck down to the edge of the river here, pretty much as far as the road goes. Lots of people have obviously been four wheel driving up this way. We found a couple of good swimming holes, and it's a pretty nice day. Jade, Jade and Riley in their tog, so. Look at this spot, it looks a bit west coast-ish. Tell you what, this place is so quiet and peaceful though. Looks like there's been a bit of evidence of some camping here over the Easter weekend, I think. I keep looking for what we could be There's so much more like kings and queens Well you've got me in this On arrival train. back to camp, the dinosaur discovery was setting up A three day job for them putting up fences and laying everything out We watched the display taking shape and we were pretty stoked when they came over to say that we could come through Especially after all the noise that they were making setting up Normally, this is pretty overpriced at $25 per person, kids included, but a family of four can get in for $88. The kids enjoyed having a wander through and they also got to test out the bouncy castle, which was a bit of a treat for them. The staff running this, they were a very friendly bunch. They were also camping with us. There's so much more like kings and queens. Well, you've got me in this train. I need your hand to win If I have to leave this up to chance You're again Cool, well we have arrived at Ōpua This is kind of like the main area for people that are sailing to New Zealand from the Pacific 
you would sail into here to do your customs and immigration at this big wharf, the Bay of Islands. So we were here in Opua, as this is where the bike trail ends for us to get south. Watch a couple of sailing channels on the old YouTube, so seen people bring their boats into here. If you've just sailed across the Pacific, it's probably really helpful having this Burnsco here, which is like one of those outdoor hunting, camping stores and heaps of uh, things to repair stuff. With winter approaching, we were starting to think about our battery and solar setup after all the problems last winter. So it's nice to have a store like this to see what options there are. But we didn't stick around for too long before we were off to the main town in the Bay of Islands, Paihia. After our time further north, it was feeling very peopley. So far I'm uh, not really feeling the vibes here, it feels a bit busy. A little bit claustrophobic, a town that's kind of about growing its roading infrastructure. Ooh, but we'll go have a look anyway. Town was pretty busy, and I do try to not video random people in our videos. But there's plenty of nice artwork in the streets to admire, and we considered taking the ferry across to Russell. But from what we've heard, it's mostly nice cafes and boutique shops, which really isn't our scene. It is nice every once in a while, but... We did go to check out the Waitangi Treaty Grounds to discover that this is now a paid attraction at $30 per adult if you're a New Zealand citizen. We've been before so we figured we'd just keep our money. Feeling a bit blah, we did revive our attitudes a bit when we arrived at the Haruru Falls. Yes! Something nice! Something free! And it's in the wild! Kind of! We've come to Haruru Falls and there's these roosters and chicks that have greeted us. This was definitely an interesting stay for us. When there's lots of people around, I do struggle to get the camera out. The kids were also growled multiple times at the AMP show grounds for climbing on a tree. Someone also came to speak to me about the Auckland youth styled graffiti work that my children had done to the concrete, which they would like removed as soon as possible. Literally lovely chalk drawings. I think Auckland would be happy if colorful artwork done in chalk was a main issue. Our kids have never been told off at a campsite before, so we were happy to be leaving the spot, which is a great place to have those long showers, charge everything up on power, and get your laundry done. But for us, on to new adventures. We'll see you in the next one, team.